Hey, I'm Stephanie, and it's hay fever season, so I needed an easygoing video today, and I thought that made it the perfect time for an Adagio beauty update. Today, I thought we could start by talking about the difference between a low buy and this whole Adagio beauty approach. Anyone who is trying to create positive change or become more mindful of certain habits, whether shopping or otherwise, ultimately has to choose the tools and systems they want to use to make those changes or become more aware. And I have always found discussions of the thought processes behind those tools and systems really interesting, which is why I thought maybe we could have one of those discussions today. And then maybe we can dive into the more personal aspects of the whole thing. So how my relationship with Adagio Beauty is developing, my plans for the future of my makeup collection, and my beauty goals for this year. So since successfully completing a no buy year a while ago, I have been trying to find a moderate approach to shopping for the things I enjoy, like makeup. But I'm trying to do it in an organic way by creating a mindset. Adagio Beauty. Some people might think of the Adagio Beauty or Adagio shopping approach as a low buy. And in a way, I guess it kind of is because I'm trying to shop less. But in my mind, at least, there is a key difference between Adagio Beauty and a low buy. And that is this. I view things like low buys and no buys as tools, valuable tools, sets of rules that act as a reset button for our brains. They place an artificial pause button on our natural reactions so that we get some additional time to learn how to live with certain feelings. Uncomfortable feelings that, say, might trigger a quest for comfort in the form of retail therapy. But no buys and low buys also give us time to simply sit with the feelings triggered by delayed gratification. Time to actually realize what our feelings and needs are, and then time to develop healthier reactions to those feelings and needs, including healthier shopping habits. A no-buy or a low-buy's rules can give us structure and a fail-safe, an automatic no that we can use as a crutch if our muscles of self-control aren't yet strong enough to get our shopping habits to where we want them to be. And once a no-buy or low-buy project is over, some people realize that they just really need to rely on a set of rules like that in order to prevent behaviors like overspending or compulsive shopping. Recognizing and acting on that fact is a huge help for those people. I see it as a strength, a proof that someone is self-aware enough to realize the boundaries of their own self-control and their willingness to rely on a set of tools that will help them achieve their goals. I honestly wasn't sure if maybe I fall into that category or if maybe I could take a more organic approach. Because although my no-buy definitely helped me strengthen my muscles of self-control and I feel like it was a very beneficial experience that I would recommend in a heartbeat, I don't know that it got me quite far enough to reach the heart of the problem. It put me on the right path to get there, but I have a feeling that the mechanics of rules are only able to get someone like me so far. I think the heart of the matter for me is that I'm the type of person who finds it very difficult to consistently focus on their own priorities. I constantly feel like I'm just being pulled in several different directions. And I think when I am not connected to my own needs, that makes me more vulnerable to reacting impulsively to feelings that I might not even be aware of. So I decided that instead of focusing on rules, I would focus on my priorities. And that's how Adagio Beauty was born. It's a phrase that represents a mindset, the beauty of a slow tempo. Because I figure maybe if I just move slowly enough, then I'll always have time to find my way back to myself before making a decision I don't actually wanna make. I have only one hard and fast rule, and that is if I wanna buy something, I have to be able to afford it. When I began, that simply meant I had to have enough money in my bank account to pay for stuff. But after being on this Adagio beauty journey for over a year, I've come to realize that being able to afford something has so much more to do with just not going into debt. The price we pay to buy a new thing is only one of many costs incurred by each item in our lives. That thing needs to be stored cleaned, used, maintained, and at some point it's going to require proper disposal. So for example, if I say buy a new eyeshadow palette and it comes home with me, this doesn't pay the mortgage, it doesn't pay the rent, 
I do that. So that means a portion of my rent or my mortgage is being paid so that this thing can have storage space in my home. And I have come to realize that if this item isn't paying its way in the form of utility or giving me enjoyment, then it needs to be evicted <laughs> because housing prices are simply too high for freeloaders. A related cost has to do with ease of access. If I have a drawer of eyeshadow palettes and I buy even one too many, then that drawer starts to get too full and then it costs me my nerve every time I do my makeup. Things get shoved to the back, lost in the mix, or broken in the tumult. Or maybe something beautiful expires before I have the chance to use it enough simply because I don't have enough time. If time is money and I don't have the time for something, then by extension, I don't have the money for it right? So I've come to realize that my stuff is much more expensive than I ever thought. Even if I can financially afford to purchase something, that doesn't necessarily mean I can afford it in this broader sense of the word. Can I afford the space it takes up? Can I afford the time I have to spend keeping those things organized? Do I have enough time to spend using it? Enjoying it? So this year, one of my main goals is to find a way to organize my makeup in a way that helps me to visualize what I can afford. And I've decided to do that using the container concept. In other words, I am going to take the makeup storage capacity I already have in the form of things like my vanity table, and I am going to evaluate how much I should have based on ease of access and space in that context. And then I can see what I need to trim down. Does this mean I'm becoming a minimalist? No! <laughs> if you missed that video, I will link it below because it was quite the experiment and it definitely taught me a lot. Even though I'm not planning on getting rid of everything, I do think I'm now at a good point to do this because I have spent the past two years carefully, deliberately comparing every single makeup item I have, getting to know the nuances and minute details of every single formula and shade and color. So I think I'm at a good place to organize because if I need to declutter certain items because they don't fit, then I at least know exactly what I think about each item and which ones suit me best. I'm still trying to figure out exactly where to start. I don't know if it would be good to just take out all of my makeup and then put it back in individually or if I should maybe do a declutter first so I can see how much room I'll ultimately have and then reorganize from there. If you happen to have any suggestions, please share them in the comments because I'm, I'm at a loss right now. I'll figure it out, <laughs> maybe with your help. But if you'd like to watch the process, make sure you're subscribed because I do plan on filming it all. So that is how the further development of Adagio Beauty is going to be affecting my makeup collection. But there's also a tried and true thing that I've been doing since the beginning of Adagio Beauty that's also affecting my beauty activities. And that is that I like to set myself an overarching beauty goal to achieve. Last year, that goal was to optimize my under eyes. I focused on optimizing the way I used the skincare and makeup that I already owned, and it was a roaring success. I don't know that I've ever been happier with the way that my under eyes look in makeup. I know that I talked about the things I learned here and there in individual videos throughout last year, but I don't know that I ever did a dedicated video about it. So if that's something you'd like to see, let me know in the comments. But as happy as I am with the way my under eyes have been looking, I think the biggest benefit of all of doing that was that I learned that skill power gives me willpower. I was investing so much energy into learning about the nuances of the products I have and how I could better apply them that I just had a whole lot less mental energy available for things like shopping. So it was a really fun, organic way of distracting myself from an activity I'm trying to limit anyway. Since that goal setting and achieving went so well and kept me so busy that I avoided purchasing a thousand and one new concealers, I thought it would be a good idea to set myself a new goal for this year. So since January, I I have been trying to master my complexion, which will be no small feat because I've got rosacea here, fine lines here, oil here, dry there. So it's all going to be an adventure. But if it goes as well as my under eye journey did last year, 
I'm very excited. And I think the timing is perfect because I have not purchased a new foundation since before my no buy year, which means that all of my foundations are coming to an end. I'm hoping that by taking the same approach as I did with my under eyes last year, that I will get to know my skincare and my current skin needs and the current skin products that I have well enough so that when I do need to go out and repurchase a foundation, that I'll be able to find the one that best meets those needs. Last but not least, you might have seen my most recent one hand haul and notice that I'm generally not purchasing a whole lot right now. And a lot of that has to do with my plans to overhaul my whole collection and reorganize everything because I just don't know what I can really afford yet. And so that means I've had different financial priorities these past few months and I've chosen to spend the great majority of my disposable income on things other than makeup. For example, I recently purchased a $300 pillow. I know, I know that sounds insane. I just heard myself say it. But it wasn't a design choice. It wasn't retail therapy. It wasn't an impulse purchase. It was a very deliberate choice and it was a very painful one to make, but I made it out of desperation. If you were following me last year, you might remember a brief reference here or there to joint pain. And it had just gotten to the point where I couldn't even sleep anymore. It was kind of driving me insane. And so all I can say is that insanely priced pillow has been worth every penny. <laughs> and I might not have had enough pennies to buy it had I been out there buying makeup willy-nilly. The only reason I think this is all worth mentioning at all is because in the days before my no buy or before Adagio Beauty, I think I probably would have dealt with the emotional drain of that problem differently. I think I would have used retail therapy in the form of things like makeup or clothes to try to make myself feel better. But these projects are altering my reflexes. Instead of automatically running out and buying myself a little treat every time I'm not feeling so great, I have learned to sit with that discomfort. And giving myself the time to really think about what my needs are helps me find actual solutions to my problem. So instead of going out and buying a lipstick here and an eyeshadow there and a blush here and a bronzer there, I ended up keeping all of that money. And then when I found the solution, this <laughs> exorbitantly priced, really ugly, but unbelievably heavenly pillow, I was able to buy it. In other words, Adagio Beauty is reinforcing my ability to accept discomfort, both mental and physical. And when I give myself the time to simply sit in that discomfort, it helps me recognize what my actual underlying needs are. And once I recognize what they are, it's so much easier for me to meet them. And this is ultimately making me so much happier than retail therapy ever could. All this is just to say, if you are currently in a place where you feel like you're struggling with overspending, compulsive shopping, or just being overwhelmed with stuff, and maybe you're considering starting a no buy or a low buy, or maybe recommitting to one, or maybe you just wanna join me on this adagio beauty thing it isn't always easy but it has been so worth it so i will definitely continue on this path if you'd like to join me i hope you'll like comment subscribe all that jazz or maybe you'd like to share some of your experiences in this subject area in the comments but even if you don't i hope you have a great week and we can all remember that even stumbling can be a form of moving forward so let's stumble in style